Welcome back everybody to the Bros of DK. I'm Leslie and today behind the camera is Danny, friend of mine. Check him out, his link to his YouTube channel is in the description. And we are filming today the time capsule home of the Lopez family. A Portuguese family that has started living in this place in the 18th century. They have been in this town all their lives. And since 1992, everything is left behind in this place untouched for 30 years. I'm gonna take you on a tour throughout it and show you the ancient things that are left behind. I'm really excited for this one because it's a really, really cool house. So let's go. Prepare yourself, because we are about to embark on a historical journey back to the former times. For this week's documentary, we will return to the country of Portugal to unveil the long forgotten story of the Lopez family. Since the year 1992, the family house has been locked up and we are the first ones to venture inside since that date. We will unveil the story of the family and in particular a very special woman who lived here. This was Mrs. Marion, the mother of the family she was born in 1905 and lived in the household all her life. Since the year 1905, when Mrs. Marion was born, until the year 1960, she was not able to read or write. And at that last part of her life, she decided to do something with it and went back to school to study reading and writing. She was also the last one remaining in this long forgotten place. Let us today take you inside and tell you the tale of this traditional Portuguese family. We're gonna start off this exploration in the new part of the house. This part has later been built on because the family got too big. The people that lived in here, they were really, really poor. And yeah, they just had lots of children and they all lived together grandmothers, the parents, the children, all in this house. I'm gonna look at the furniture and see what's left behind. First off, look over here. Everything is still inside of this place. Oh. This is like liquor, right? No, that's Portuguese, the Compal, it's a, a company, a, a juice company. Juice company, okay, this is like it's old school lemonade. Really, really old school. Wow like homemade wine left behind, jam left behind. I also love the plates that are in here. And the cabinet itself is also very special because these people, they didn't spend money on luxury things, but they liked their house to be nice. So they bought these nicely designed cabinets, 
with the little windows and the design on there as well. The nuts that they once got from the field are still here, left behind. Oh wow, what's that? I have actually no clue, it's a little cork with some tarp around it. Probably to fix up some things in the house. Really neat cabinet with all things left behind. People used to smoke a lot back in the day, so we're gonna see a lot of ash trays as well around this house. Wonderful. I love the chairs as well. For such a poor family, these are amazing chairs. They have design on it. We don't even have that at home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have just normal chairs, but they, they loved their furniture and their designs inside of the house. Very, very religious, of course. Typical Portuguese. The Last Supper. What was the Portuguese name again? A Ultima Seia. Ultima Seia. A Ultima Seia. <laughs> I feel like a real Portuguese. And in this room, there used to be a chandelier on the ceiling, but it has fallen down over the years. And it broke the last plate that was on the table. You can see that it once was like a gas chandelier, but they converted it into an electric one after some time. You see that a lot in abandoned places. And I think people did this because they were really used to gas chandeliers and they loved the design of them. And that's maybe why they converted it back into an electric one and still got the shape of a gas chandelier. We have a little drawer here to the side. The last plants that are beloved. Margarita? Ma Margarita. Margarita. I, I can't really pronounce that name, but uh, Margarita was the last inhabitant cut from the field. Some sugar. Wow, look at this bottle. Olive oil. Olives. Olives, olives in there. Still olives in there. <laughs> True time capsule. And here, all the towels were inside for the bathroom. They used the drawer in the dining area as a storage area for the towels. Wow. The grandchildren of Margarita also used to come to this place after the children had moved out. You can see the football table of them is still left behind. Completely rusted. And this was the entrance door to the place where people would be let in. Completely falling apart. I love the curtains on there. I also want to point out this, Danny. I told you, or I told you guys also, that this place was from the 18th century and they, of course, didn't have electricity back in the day. So you can see that it was later fitted on. All electricity in this place. And before, they just got oil lamps. This used to be an oil lamp converted into an electrical lamp. What I also found really strange in this room is that there is a bed left behind. And when you see a bed downstairs, typically, that means that people got too old to move around in the house and they just moved their bed to an easier place in the house. So they didn't have to move all the way very close to the kitchen, very close to the bathroom. And that little setup over there was to get out of the house. Just an umbrella, you would hang your coat up there with a mirror as well, so you could check your hair in the morning, if it was all right to leave the place. And that, my lovely viewers, brings us to the kitchen. Look at this place. A very, very typical kitchen for a poor Portuguese family. Come over here, Danny, show the people the cooking area. There are a few and unique things about this. First off, always Portuguese curtains. Just love the design on it. And it's the same as the towels that I got in this place. No, 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 no. That's a curtain from down there. That's a curtain. Oh, there's a curtain from down there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there would also be a curtain hanging over here, of course. A little basket. Some rocks in there, I see. And then you can see that these people were really poor with this. Just have one stove heated on gas. 
one of the last gas canisters that they had in this place. Wow. Exhausted. This used to be a bellow, I think. Or a little plate. I think it's just to make uh, wind on the fire. Oh yeah, that could be true. Wow. A very fiery small dining table. What's that? This used to be a wine bottle or something yeah, like that. It's broken. Cork. Yeah, it's just a vase. And then we have this little drawer set up. With all the cups and plates on there. I really love it. This pineapple was for the water. I'll put this on the table. I'm not going to touch it too much because there are lots of spider webs around it. I want to preserve that. Some flour in a jar. <laughs> and these little. You would collect the spices. Yeah. Wow, they're all so tight and rusted up over the years that it's abandoned. The last plant. <laughs> Look at this cutlery. It's maybe for the children, it's from wood. No, back in the days they didn't have uh, iron cutlery. Iron, no, it was only wood. Wow, that's crazy. This is how old this house is. It's truly old and forgotten. Of course, a sack of corks. <laughs> <laughs> so Portuguese. Wow. And on this side, we've got the sink set up. They even got a marble top in here. Did you see that? Yeah. Wow. Very normal. Very normal. Yeah. Toronto, Canada. Like the old thermometer. Brushes. The last towel. Wow. I really love this. The water bottle, the last water bottle of the woman. Oh, and we were also talking about this um, Terman, Terman, I, I don't know the exact name anymore, but it's something very Portuguese. Can you read it? What's on there? Aguajas. I think it's just vinegar, but I'm not sure. It's some, no, no, or some it's... sort of an oil. I don't know how to explain it. Agua has it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Some cabinets over here. Oh yeah, I really love this bottle that I have at the back here. I'm from the Netherlands or Belgium. That's almost the same. And uh, this this bottle is from Amsterdam, and it's like an old school liquor that the the Dutch would sell. There's nothing in there anymore. Really love these bottles. And over here, you can see this is how the sink would be drained. It's like a sink underneath the sink. <laughs> Chair. This part will lead us later into the newer part of the house. But first, we're gonna go to this side and see more this part of the house. First off, have a look at this bathroom. This thing, what we're seeing here hanging, used to be the shower. They would fill this bucket up with water, hot water, and then it would turn this little valve, and it would shower underneath here. And these people were actually very, very small. This is crazy, right? I've never seen that in an abandoned place before. And this is the drain for the shower. Wow. The toilet paper is left behind. The toilet itself. Still water in there. <laughs> the towels. That Margarita last used. And you can see that she was the only person living in this place at the end of our life. We have lots of women's products, lots of shampoos for women, and a little medical cabinet. She even 
didn't get to use that last toilet roll up there. Also down here, we have this plastic bag that's completely filled with toys for the children, for the grandchildren that came to her and visited her. Let's close this a lot nicely and head over to this room over here. And I believe that this was Margarita's bedroom at the end of her life. Let's head inside. The bed in here is still made. The last blankets, pillows. And above the bed, we can see a wonderful, wonderful chandelier with three dragons going around it. This chandelier also used to be an oil lamp. This beautiful design bowl in the middle here used to be the reservoir for the oil. But now it has been converted with a light bulb. Wow, a wonderful piece. Behind you, we have the closet of the woman with a mirror on it. I'm gonna open that for you. All the clothes of her are still in there. Let me take out some. Fire truck. Fire truck. <laughs> <laughs> Excuses for the sound. Oh, well, we got some clothes of her here. Oh my God. These, these, sorry for pointing it out, but no. these are the clothes, the nicest clothes to go to the church. Oh yeah. And my grandmother has almost the same thing. But they are wonderful to see. And they're all left behind in here. That's just so crazy, right? And sad. And sad as well. Filming abandoned places does get sad sometimes. Seeing all these things left behind, people that have vanished from the earth and went to heaven. A vanity. Her last vanity. Still see some jewelry inside of here. Some earrings, some, uh, some hangers, some necklaces. Perfume bottle. Completely empty. This was a candle she used to go around the house at night. These are tissues. Normally we always have paper tissues, but back in the day, people used to carry like these handkerchiefs, you can also call them, or tissue. And I still myself sometimes use them, carry them around in a pocket. And you can just wash them and then very ecological as well. <laughs> More people should do this. I really love to see this little drawer filled with these napkins, uh, tissues or handkerchiefs, as you can call them. Side. We have some products for the woman. And this mirror is in the same style as the furniture that we saw in the dining area. Brush in here as well. It's very Portuguese little uh, cloths that you would put everywhere over stuff. <laughs> Drawers are difficult to close. Let's look in the one below it as well. Oh, we've got a little purse. Little wallet to store some coins, but now the keys are in here. Wow. <laughs> Again, difficult to close. <laughs> she also got a share in here, and this share she would use in, her, use in the bedroom to sit on and to put on our clothes in the morning, to put on the socks and stuff like that. And also to hang up the clothes at night. That would be very easy to take them off again. Her last shoes as well, are still in here. And then what's in this chest, you think? No idea? Me neither. Mm, maybe. 
three, two, one, blankets. <laughs> of course, blankets in the chest. So Portuguese. I love the style of this chest as well. It's like this metal on top. Sorry for sitting on the bed, but that's easiest at this point. Like a marble top. And this is a bottle of holy water. As you can see. Little candle, swan candle. Wonderful place. Really wonderful. And now it's time to take you all to the new part of the house. This little wooden doorway will take us into the other part of the house. But first off, have a look at the walls in here and how thick they are. That's a very typical design for a poor Portuguese house. In this way, this is just the cheapest way to build a house. As you can see, it's just sand actually. Yeah. Wow. And that will take us into another room. But first off, have a look how small this doorway is. My shin, if I stand like this, fits above it. <laughs> but I'm a Dutch guy. Come, give me the camera. Danny's a lot shorter than me. <laughs> Sorry, boy. Yeah. And he even doesn't fit through this door. A building from the 1800s. And that's, you see evolution in this place. Truly see it. We come here into a little sitting area actually, with some chairs around, but they also had a bedroom in this sitting area. And that shows us again how poor these people were. They were with a really big family in a really small house and they have to place bedrooms everywhere. Oh, oh. The person that slept in this bedroom even had a little, yeah, a little library up here to place some books, as you can see. Some old school books. Livro de Leitura. What does that mean? It's just a book of uh, wow, look things, at poems. Poems. No, okay. uh, stories. Stories. Oh, wow. Storybook. Old school storybook. Story book. Wow. Incredible, right? How it's designed. And even the children did little, little drawings inside of this book. They call it in the people. Call it on the elephant. I love the design of this book. And we have many of these books inside of this little library. We can again see Toronto, Canada. Wow, maybe yeah. they went there. Probably, or it's a souvenir from the children. Yeah, so the children probably studied and went abroad. They maybe got some more opportunities than their parents and they might have brought, brought this back for them. Whew, look at this bed, still made after all those years. Also really enjoyed that carpet on the wall. It's a nice design. Very simple, but elegant. Look at this coffee table. When people came into the house, they were not offered a coffee, they were also offered a coffee. But in addition to that, back in the day, people would offer them a cigarette. <laughs> we have a little cigarette dispenser with all these cigarettes in here. Oh, look at that. And you could just take one out in a very elegant way to give a guest a cigarette. Back in the day, people smoked a lot, a lot more than we do nowadays. Oh, that encavement. Wow. Put a vase in there and some Portuguese designs and some plates. Wonderful to see. Again, even in this part of the house, you can see that the electricity has been added on later on. A little briefcase down here. 
the scarf in there, probably self-knitted. Yeah. Yeah, most likely. That's the chest for knitting. I also can see this iron holder. Back in the day, they would place their iron on here because it was too hot to put, to put of course, on the clothes and then they would put it on that. Wow. <gasps> I haven't even seen that picture up there. Oh, that's an old school picture. Looks like from the army or from the police. These people are all wearing uniforms. That's such a lovely picture to see. The batteries up here have been here forever. The acid is leaking out of them. Little dolls, porcelain dolls up there. See this curtain and this will reveal a Portuguese or just a storage area for booklets. Some other things in here. Whoa. This gets. Oh my God. I can remember using them when I was young. Floppy disks. <laughs> it's crazy, I've never had this whole thing full of floppy disks. A VHS tape recorder is also down here. A true time capsule, I must say. And behind you here, Danny, we enter into another bedroom. Let me take you in there. The first thing my eye catches is this chest. Let's look at it. The leather design. Then this key to open and close it. That back yes I do and this over here my lovely viewers is a diploma from Maracarida Lopez it's a diploma from 1968 it says over here the 7th of January 1968 and this diploma tells us that she passed the fourth grade exam and that means she was born in 1905, you can see here. Uh, Nacido, that means born, right? Yeah. In 1905, the 10th of February, 1905. And she went to school in 1968. That's the day when she learned to read and write. Can you imagine that? She was 63 years old. Yeah. Yes, 63 years old when she learned to read and write. Mind blow. <laughs> We've got a little picture over here, probably of her, together with her mom, on a little vacation. They are standing next to a fountain, it seems like. Wow. And then he also told me that you can see how poor these people were. They spent most of their money on the bed. You can see this enormously beautiful bed. Wonderful design on there. but. They couldn't spend any money on a lamp next to it. Wow, her bra is still hanging here on the bed. Let's have a look at this little lamp here on the nightstand. Wonderful to see. We've got another picture, more properly from her in her youth. Lots and lots of things on the bed. Of course, a religious depiction above it. Wow, wonderful. Some shoes as well. These are really nice shoes. Some magazines in here. Wow. You know these? Yeah, my grandmother has the same. <laughs> Readers Digest. Gonna leave them in their plastic, of course. Let's look. Ooh, I love that hanger, that coat hanger. Specially made to hang up your coats at night or, or your clothing at night so it stays neat and without wrinkles. And in here again. All the clothes, 
are left behind. The coat she would wear, probably to church or on board a defense. A wonderful piece. What? It's the smell. Oh, I, he was laughing at me like... No, it's not laughing, it's just the smell is so strong. Yeah, it's really strong odor coming from this closet. Yeah. <laughs> All the belts are still also here. <laughs> no worries, man. Let's go further in this place. And then we come into the kitchen area. Here we can get an artifact from when the place got abandoned. Maybe somebody had to do something with bus, bus driving, I don't know. In 1992, it's the last calendar that they hang up in this place. Wow. This kitchen is truly Portuguese. Wonderful. Here to the side first, you have a few things. This looks like an oil dispenser of some sort, but I'm not 100% sure what it was used for. Maybe it was just for kitchen oil or something else. Then we walk straight into another bathroom with the same style of shower above it. Wow. Oh, I'm just <laughs> going into the spider webs. Look at this place. The perfumes of her are still left here, as you can see. Her last shaver with the hairs still on there. <laughs> <laughs> and the toilet as well to the side. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I love places like this. This, my lovely viewers, was the washing machine. Here they washed their clothes inside. Can you imagine washing in a thing like this? Thomas says on there. The umbrella is left behind. And when I first came into this house, I saw this big face, as you can call it. It's actually a reservoir where they used to store wine inside. Portuguese people are really big wine drinkers and they probably stored homemade or regional made wine in this thing. Little valve to open and close it. Love the sound that it makes. Up here, the pastas are left behind. All the things that they would need in the kitchen, the spices are all still in here. We have the rice as well. Wow. And down here, we have the sink area with the last dishes. Uh, the last, yeah, the last dishes that Margarita had. Still not cleaned after all those years. The leaves have flown inside, taking over this place. This is just crazy to see. Oh, this is full of water. This water is 30 years old. <laughs> I'm the first one opening that. <laughs> An exhauster up here. Tropical Portuguese. Why is there no curtain? <laughs> no curtain around the exhaust, that's very unusual for a Portuguese place. Look at this lid. Oh, the design on it is wonderful. That's probably got a wee worth a lot of money. It is. Yes? If it's complete, yes. If it's complete, okay, it's not complete. Look at all the things in here. The drainer for the spaghetti. The pots and pans. Oh, what's this machine? Oh, it's this device. It's probably to make coffee, but it's really stuck to it. And the oven as well. In here, we have all the plates. Wow, so stuck. Cups and plates and all the things. An agenda from 1900. 76 with handwritten notes in there as well. It's 
really fragile paper. Maybe some things that she needed to do. I don't know. I, don't know. I think that's it. I don't know. I don't know. Me neither. Look at the setup over here. Wow. <gasps> Was this to write down what you need from the store? That looks like yeah. it, right? Yeah, we can see all the products here to the side. Salt, fruit, this is meat. And then you would write it up here, this little paper. And when there's enough things on there, you just rip it off and you would take it to the store with you. It's a really handy device. Now we write it in our phones. <laughs> it's this device. Oh, I think this is the dryer. So we saw the washing machine. Weird. The dryer. Yeah, it's probably the dryer. It's really weird. Oh. <sighs> if I must say, it's pretty weird because... Why do you think it's weird? Because Portuguese people don't have dryers. We just hang our clothes. Yeah, it's really warm in this country. So uh, that's indeed very weird. They were a poor family. So why would they have a dryer? My favorite brand, Sagarash. It's Portuguese beer from the north. Uh, no. Not exactly from the north? No, Lisbon. It's, it's produced all over the country. It's from Lisbon. Okay, but this is an old school bottle design. Yes. Probably 30 years old or more. A little less rusted. Hanging cups for the coffee. Coffee is very important in Portugal. Oh, wow, look in here. This, my lovely viewers, is a phone book where they write down the phone numbers of their contacts. I know a phone book. Some people might think, what's a phone book? But uh, there you would write down the numbers of people you wanted to contact. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> a jar of jam with still jam in there left behind. Oh, this for jewelry for the earrings. No. For what is it then? Uh, it, that's to put medicine. Oh, and you could also look at yourself in it. It's weird, yeah. What medicine? Wow. See little papers up here from gas station, I think. Yeah. Oh, that was from uh, from the phone bill from mobile. Oh yeah. It's for the phone. And what do we have down here? Lots of products for the kitchen and cookies and all the things. Little can of sausages, six, six Frankfurt German sausages. Wow. I saw this, this popped into my eye. A can of tuna. Mm. Tuna is a product from Portugal and it's probably also made in Portugal. Yeah, Bon Petit. It's very non-brand. Yeah. Wow. It, it stays good until 2001. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, was very good. Wow, let's go further into the house. And then we got two last rooms left in this place. The first room that I'm standing in, this is actually not the room, but this is the entrance hall. Another entrance hall to the place, as you can see. Oh, look behind you here. We have the head left behind. And this is probably the football team that the man of this place used to enjoy. Desporto. Wow. Behind us here, we got like some sort of, oh yeah, it's also a bedroom. But they threw lots and lots of things inside of here. Wow. The singer sewing machine left beside the side over there. Also lots of children's toys in this place. And the vanity over there, we can see as well behind the children's toys. Look over here on this board. We've got drawings from the children left in here. Just wonderful to see. The calendar from Play-Doh. These are real memories. They drew a house on here. 
And this drawing is from 1995. Wow. Wonderful. And that takes us to the last room of the house. This is the formal dining room where the family would come together when they had like a party. And back when everybody lived here, they probably used this one a lot as well. Off the door, Danny. A curtain, a curtain without a purpose, just for decoration. <laughs> There's nothing behind here. <laughs> Look at this. More cassettes from back in the day. Floppy disks. Completely filled with glasses. Very fancy ones as well. Oh, the sound it makes. They also got these little display setups with some tiny faces and plates on there. Little woodwork here on the wall. Yeah, I almost trampled over it. But in the middle of the room, we have this children's car. <laughs> Look at it. Wow, even a Portuguese number plate. A Renault. <laughs> Crazy. I already forgot the name again. <laughs> a Ultima Sai. A Ultima Sai, the Last Supper. A Ultima Sai. Wow. For the children to draw with. Here are the fancy plates for the fancy dinners. Gold ring around it, the design on it, that's how you can see. These are probably the last ashes in here from the people. Sorry that I filmed this, but that's really interesting to me. Again, the wood cutlery. Look down here. Wow, this is some amazing dishes. So cool. Cups. I don't want to break it. It didn't break. <laughs> it didn't break. Excuse me for that. This is empty. Wonderful to see half this. Some African art on the wall. Got another one of those display setups. Here to the side. Oh, this is amazing. Another entrance door. This is the side entrance door. Look how the building is literally falling apart. It's not usable anymore, unfortunately. In this room, we saw lots of African art over here as well. An African painting to the side. It's strange. And then we got the dinner table. Watch out with the car, please. Yeah, the car. <laughs> got the dinner table. This pencil. Amazing. Inked pencil. Wonderful to see all of this. Just wonderful. What a place. I'm amazed by it. That we can find places like this. There's one last thing I forgot in the kitchen I see over here and it's this little setup with the cabinet above, the pots and pans in there from back in the day. Oh. Ice cube maker, a pan to make food inside of. And these are really Portuguese. Yeah. I also love the design, this little cabinet. And down here got some more things. This is a meat slicer, right? Yeah, ham. 
and a ham slicer. Wow. Some oils. This is for the bread behind here. And here are the not formal plates. These are just the daily plates, and you can see that they're all different from each other. Just the plates that they found everywhere. <laughs> Last two. There's a saw in here for some sort of weird reason. And with that saw, I'm gonna say goodbye. And I'm gonna thank you all for this watching this wonderful video of this time capsule home. I really loved the house of the Lopez family. If you did so as well, like the video, comment down there and subscribe to the channel if you are new. There's also a link in the description for Patreon. There you can support us for going on these amazing adventures around the world. With that all being said, I want to thank you and I'll see you in the next adventure.